Force motherboard, the special one that uh, we're going to be focusing on tonight's show. So, Dino, how are you doing? Hey, I'm great. Thanks for uh, having me and having Gigabyte on the show. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys. Well, uh, thank you for being here. I know it's going to be easier for you to be there because it's uh, the beginning of the afternoon for you at this time. Beer clock. <laughs> <laughs> And and that's how you oh you drink at work now oh damn that that's that's not a good idea though. <laughs> <laughs> and of course our um, our usual editorial guest uh, Neo and Neo is the uh, editor in chief of the Overclockers and is a regular guest as uh, as part of this uh, live Q and A show and he will share with us his thought on the different topics that we're gonna discuss today. Uh, Neo, you made it right on time just to the last minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so it seems he's there, but don't know exactly where. <laughs> and of course, as you can see on the screen, we have Timothy Xiala, our producer from our studio live in Taipei, taking care of the production of the show. Yes. Uh, don't forget, guys, you can always ask uh, questions on the live chat, and uh, we're gonna be like answering them, like Dino. Uh, Roma and myself, Timothy and Neo, we will be all answering all your questions. So, thank you for being there. I can say hi to um, Ronnie Campos, Aerotracks, the Goat Eater, and Van Bud. Thank you guys for being there. Uh, there's a lot more of you guys uh, there, but uh, just ask your question, and we're gonna try to answer that. Yeah. So let's get in deep into the show. Uh, first of all, I want to know what you guys. Um, Add as a highlight uh, for the past few weeks. So, Roman, what would be the uh, the highlights that you have? Uh, technology news or something that happened uh, in the past uh, few uh, few weeks? Well, past few weeks. Uh, well, yeah. For me personally, my best news was uh, promoting my own tool, uh, which I've been working on for a few weeks. Uh, basically, the tool to delete the CPUs. Hmm. Well, we're going to talk a lot about that in the uh, last topic of this show tonight. Uh, Dino, what will be your news for, uh, for this show? Well, aside from uh, chatting about our new motherboard, uh, Z170 XSSC Force, I, uh, I'm kind of looking forward to the start of the Country Cup. It feels like uh, you know all the guys are rallying up. Australia, obviously, is a two-time winner consecutively. We smashed everyone last year in all stages. So. <laughs> Be an interesting one this, this year. I haven't, I haven't done much overclocking, so hopefully the other guys are fired up. But uh, we'll get there. Th that's funny because just before the show, you were saying, "Oh, we, I, I will do a cocky way to to claim that Australia will smash everyone again." But actually, it's not that bad seeing it like this. <laughs> um, um, Timote, what will be yours? yours? Um, so um, for me, so I guess oh, someone has some echo. I don't know who that is. Um, so for me, um, my highlight was the event they had uh, in France last week. So some guys, some overclockers from France, they uh, they meet up. In the well, you're talking of... about the event on the overclocking side, not what happened on Friday night, right? No, 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 not what happened. I'm talking what happened last weekend. No, so not this one, okay. the last before. Um, so, so there were like ten guys. Uh, they rented out a venue in the middle of France. They had 1,200 liters of LN2. A lot of fun. So there, there were some pictures posted. If you want to check it out, there's some on the uh, front page of Hdoy Bar in the last episode of the OC show as well. So that was my, I think, my highlight from the week as a French person. <laughs> Great. Do you have Neil close to you that can answer the question or? <laughs> He's far up. Uh, let's see. What was good? So Windows Update came out, Threshold 2, which is supposed to be faster, but I don't know how much. Oh, is that the one that makes all those crashes and blue, blue screens and stuff? Uh, actually, it's, it's weird if you're in the insider program, you just never know what's supposed to be new because you're always using the latest build or something like that. Mm. Uh, other than that, obviously, Roman's deleting tool. <laughs> yeah, it's a strange name, but it's a good tool. So, yeah, <laughs> that's been really, really exciting. Um, probably, probably the most exciting thing since Skylake came out, actually. Oh. Well, we're going to have a, a lot to talk about that in this show. And on my side, the news I wanted to talk was uh, Windows 3.1 shutdown airports. 
Uh, you, you, <laughs> yeah, didn't heard the news. <laughs> you didn't hear the news. Uh, last weekend, there was an issue uh, in uh, one of the two airports in Paris. And uh, that was linked by, back to a system that was running Windows 3.1. Uh, keep in mind that Windows 3.1 was made in 1992. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> that that extremely old. <laughs> and uh, actually, there were people saying that they don't plan on replacing that until 2017. And some people say that won't be even a working solution be be before the 2019. Uh, of course, it's not uh, a, a big deal. And I guess that most of the airport have the same uh, same kind of issues. Well, I, I'm. It's I'm scary. surprised it's very scary. and not at the same time. That but then again, you're happy so that there's not going to be any updates restarting the thing during the air traffic thing. So. But, but that's the thing. Like These kind of systems, you don't know if they will boot up if you restart them. Because <laughs> well, never, the never touch a running busy. system, right? Yeah, yeah. Don't touch. Actually, it probably had an issue because someone tripped on the cable, had forgotten it was there, you know. Like, oh, oh what is this? <laughs> But the, the worst part is this kind of system cannot run on new, on, uh, on new hardware, but so they have to replace old hardware as well. So you have the legacy of the system, but you have the legacy about the hardware as well. So that's actually, uh, I won't say sad in a way, but well, that, that's, how, that's how it is. Uh, thank you guys for joining us on the show. If you're joining from the Twitch front page, uh, welcome. This is the OC show. We, uh, that's the show where we talk about all the latest news in the overclocking world as well uh, about computer hardware and tonight we will have a discussion about the online competitions the gigabyte soc uh, z170x soc force we have uh, dino there to talk about that with us and we also have uh, roman from germany uh, he's gonna talk about this special tool to uh, remove the the top uh, header of the, the CPUs to increase the overclockings. If you like what you are seeing, you can just follow. And I would like to uh, thank uh, Blonde Gina for following us right now. Thank you for the follow. Timothy, yes. uh, what is going on about the online competitions? Oh man, there's a lot of uh, stuff going on actually with the competition. So um, I'm going to start quickly with the novice number number five. And uh, so that's a competition that ended uh, last uh, last week already on the, on the, so on the 14th. Uh, 43 teams participated in this one. Overclock.net from um, the US slash Canada is first. Overclock.pl team from Poland is second. And Crockerland from France is third. So all good. Uh, the honor is saved. Um, France is in the top three. All good. Um, so other competition that also finished on that last weekend, that was the Rookie Rumble, which is the competition for everyone that is uh, less than three months uh, within the community. Uh, 260 people in that one, always a very popular one amongst the newcomers. Uh, Sergey R uh, from Ukraine uh, is um, first in the rankings here, uh, followed by Optimizing One from uh, Germany. And uh, Tag from Austria, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, a lot of other competitions, as you can see uh, from the schedule here, actually things are not over, not quite over yet, especially with Gigabyte being quite busy on competitions at the moment. Um, so the Gigabyte competition, it's a target competition where you have to hit targets every week, um, basically on two benchmarks. Um, so this one is split in uh, different categories. Uh, you have uh, ambient and extreme, and every time within those uh, categories, you pretty much have subcategories or subcompetitions. You have the ambient two core, ambient four core, ambient six core, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I will quickly go over it. Uh, we have uh, an Indian guy that is actually leading the ambient uh, two core one, KSA TA twenty three. I'm really not sure how to pronounce this one. Um, and on the four course ambient this time, we have um, a guy called uh, Lan Bonden um, from, uh, from, Den uh, from Sweden, actually, sorry. And then in the ambient six core here, we have a guy called Tag, which we saw already before from Austria. Uh, on the extreme side of things, um, so of course extreme, we mean extreme cooling, so using uh, liquid nitrogen uh, or anything extreme for that matter. Um, so here we have uh, Nifur, which is uh, leading the, the two-core extreme one. On the four-core extreme one, we have uh, a bit more participants, 13 in this one, and uh, the same guy is actually leading it as well, so I guess he is uh, really into, the, into hitting all the targets every week, so that's going to be quite interesting. And um, extreme six-core, 
uh, we have um, Centino X from Spain, who is actually right now in the lead here. So again, this competition just started about a week ago, so it's um, it's gonna take a little while until you see the end, because it's until December 20th, and every week there's new targets, so it's gonna be quite an interesting competition. Other competition that was also uh, going on is the ASUS ROGOC Showdown uh, Formula Series. That's a competition uh, on ambient cooling, 60 participants here. Uh, we have uh, Nick from Germany right now at the top, uh, followed by Stivert from Romania, and again, uh, KSATAA23 from India in the third place. So that's about it for the competition, Truthman. As you can see, it's been quite a, quite a busy week, actually. It's been quite a busy week, and there is even more to that. Uh, as I said in the introduction of this show, we will be choosing who is the last winner to get the tickets for the uh, special live final to happen in early December about the HOT. So if you don't know, the HOT is the HyperX OC takeover. The qualifier is now over and there's more than one, there's actually one spot left that needs to be randomly selected among the participants. Um, if I'm right, the, the rules was you have to be in the top 20 and not being selected uh, yes, to go there. correct. To, um, so, um, to, so basically, um, so eight, uh, eight people are go, um, uh, were qualified to go there, uh, two per two per region, and in the end, um, so you had a, everyone that was in the top 20 had a chance. So we have actually with us uh, today Massman from uh, HDibot, who is here to help us I'm out to make to the, the draw? Yeah, come into the field of the camera. Oh. Grab your safety helmet because you know <coughs> very important. So, Truthman, we prepared a surprise. I know you would like that. Oh, nice! <laughs> and so this is our drawing basket. So we put all the name of the guys that are, you know, in the in the top twenty. We remove the names of the guys that have already won a ticket, right? Um, well, let's actually go over the names so many people know so for okay, sure. Okay, okay, like people yeah, might so want to, to be sure North, that they're not North cheating. Are, so things. about the HyperX OC qualifier, um, the people that got qualified are from North All America, right. Splave and Fugger. Wait, so wait, 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 you should put your earbud, if not, you don't hear what, what Truth is saying. <laughs> I don't need to hear what Truth is saying. <laughs> so we should go over the names of who we are going to put in there. So first one is Punk Sots. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, Ralph. We have Coldest from Indonesia. Uh, the Goat Eater from the US. We have Top Dog from the UK. Oh, right here, yeah. Then we have Dark Venom from Brazil. Yep. Then we, then we have Alex at Row from Romania. Lumi from Finland. Then we have. Uh, Jones965 from Hungary. We have uh, Joshi Yossi UK from the UK. Obviously. And then we have Aerotrax from Germany. And last one is Gunslinger from the US. Aerotrax, who's on the chat right now, so oh, he must okay. have a, a little Same as the good time. Leader, of All right. course. So, Neo, close your eyes first. Yeah, so you're the. You're going to pick the, the winner. Inno innocent hand. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But you have to close your eyes. You can't look inside. Yeah. And now put your hand inside. Yeah. So let's okay. let's say one thing first. We draw one person that doesn't go there, right? We eliminate all of them, or we just draw the person that will go there. We draw the person that will go there. Okay. Oh. So the one that gets out of this is the actual guy. Yeah. Wow. One roll. paper only. <laughs> And it is Gunslinger. Gunslinger from the US. All right, awesome. Cool. Congratulations. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Congratulations. So you will be getting a ticket you? to go to California. All right, so I'll be leaving again. Thank you, Peter. Yes. I let Thank you go you. back to your chat and your live stream over there with five seconds difference. <laughs> <laughs> So congratulations, Gunslinger! You are actually the last uh, person to be invited to the Hyperx OC takeover in uh, that's going to happen in California, near Los Angeles, in early December. You will be competing against uh, other people from North America, uh, one being Splave and Fugger. Uh, you'll be competing against people from Asia, Asan and Lukinum from Indonesia, both of them. You will be also competing against people from Europe and. Uh, and Middle East, uh, basically Er Sanino and Dr. Wiz, uh, Dr. Wiz from South Africa. Mm -hmm. And Latin America, you will be competing against Nacho Arroyo from Argentina and Jonah Nibiar from Brazil. Uh, so all these people will be competing against Gunslinger, 
and as well the winner from last year that is extreme addict from uh, poland so i guess that's going to be a quite interesting competition to uh, to follow in early it's december it's going to be a tough that. one for sure all the guys that are going there are really strong so it's going to be quite interesting quick run for for you guys do you think that uh, extreme addict can win for <laughs> third season in a row oh sure Roman? why not you know he did twice mm. <laughs> yep so everyone thinks that uh, extreme addict can win uh, pretty much interesting <laughs> <laughs> well, we will see what happens in early December. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, thank you for, for that. If you're just joining, we are The OC Show. This is the season uh, two and we're episode 22. That's actually our um, second to last episode for this, uh, for this year. And we will be talking about a lot of topics. And one being the Gigabyte Z170X SOC Force motherboard. That's a that's a quite long name, and if you didn't know what this is, this is the uh, main board from one of the main board titled to overclocker from Gigabyte, and for that we have Dino here with us on the live chat. He's a retired overclocker. He's working for Gigabyte motherboard marketing in Australia, and even though he's less active than before in uh, in, in the scene, he's still uh, making some stuff as well as uh, some live stream from time to time. And uh, I hope that uh, you will be continuing to uh, to to do that. Um, first question before going into the uh, motherboard subject. Um, talking about the live stream, do you think you're gonna do some more anytime soon? Yeah, um, I I've sort of been testing the live stream and the software to make sure that I get it right. That I have you know it, it to get the right balance. You know when you're doing the live streams on your own in particular. It's important that if those videos are saved on YouTube later, that um, people will be able to watch them and understand. So, for example, I had to incorporate chat into the live stream, so that you, you know when I answer questions, they are actually on the video itself. So I don't look really weird answering my own questions, stuff like that. <laughs> so, yeah, I will be doing more. Yeah. Cool. Well, can't wait to uh, can't wait to that. So let's jump into the topic for tonight's show. Um, before diving into all the technical questions and so on, uh, can you present the, the board, the Gigabyte Z170X SOC Force, from an overclocker's point of view? Sure. So, uh, well, on the overclocking series, I guess, uh, we, uh, we are the only ones that specifically sort of brand and focus on products uh, in such a sense uh, that we have an overclocking series and a mindset and we think about how we're going to design product. So uh, we generally have two types of products um, on, in our product line. So we'll have the sort of high end, ultra high end, high spec boards, uh, and we'll have a more streamlined uh, product as well. So which is, for example, the Z97 uh, LN2 board that we had last year and the Z97 SSC4. So we tried to kind of break it up between kind of a fully functional, fully featured, high price kind of product and one that's kind of a little bit more streamlined towards a specific niche overclocking, uh, overclocking group. Uh, and it, most of these products uh, are, or, or biases, for example, are developed on based on some, some of the overclocking series products. So when we do a lot of our testing, it generally happens on those series of products and then we pass it on to to other other gaming boards and, and ultra durable series and uh, so on and so forth. So what what we've done with uh, the overclocking uh, uh, series this time around, I guess, is we've continued on with our tradition of offering top specs. So the SSC Force is our top of the range board. Uh, it's going to be fully featured. It has um, uh, the, the new chipset has a lot of a lot more PCI Express lanes. So we and also we've added a. PLX chips, chip to double the lanes so that we have four-way SLR capability. Uh, we've got an Alpine Ridge Intel controller, so uh, our USB Thunderbolt, everything is in native gen generation three native support straight from launch. Uh, so we've that, that's one of the reasons why we delayed some of our products. We wanted to make sure that they they are going to be compatible. That that when, for example. Um, uh, Intel enables Thunderbolt 3. We'll be able to just update the BIOS, and you'll be able to do it. Uh, we've we've got a, a OC Touch features. Uh, uh, we've changed a few things, so we can touch on that a little bit later. Yeah, uh, sure, sure. We, I have more question about that to, to <laughs> go more in detail. 
but yeah, we've basically we've we've streamlined, we've taken feedback from previous generations, and we 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 uh, we've released the SOC force. We haven't released the other board yet. We we probably will, but it, it, yeah, we'll talk about it a bit later. Oh yeah, sure. I have a lot of questions for you, and I hope uh, I'm sure that some people on the live chat will have a lot of questions as well. So if you are on the live chat and watching this on Twitch right now, you can uh, just come and ask a few questions to uh, Dino right here. Uh, I would like to thank Wrath Demiv and Ikamazu for following us tonight. Uh, thank you guys. It's uh, appreciated. Um, Dino, so you did introduce the board as like uh, something that was. Um, getting the feedback from, from people and so on. It's not the first uh, OC focused uh, motherboard that we have from Gigabyte. So can you explain how did the series of this kind of motherboard evolve over time? <laughs> and I think we had a little disconnection. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I think you can repeat yeah. the question, truth man. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I was saying the Z170X SOC Force is not the first overclocking focus board from Gigabyte. Um, how did the series evolve uh, over time? What was the first one and how did it uh, change? Yeah, uh, sorry about that. I, I, I uh, <laughs> got a word that a shark was biting into one of our internet lines that's going to time <laughs> one. So we're just, you know, I sent out a police force to call it. So. Uh, I see, I see. <laughs> we talked about shark attacks earlier before stream, and it, it's pretty crazy uh, in Australia at the moment. So not not a great place to go and swim in, in right in the morning. So on, on the overclocking series, I, I did mention it. We um, I was lucky enough to sort of start working for Gigabyte uh, uh, in 2010. So I I was a beta tester for Gigabyte and other manufacturers too, and um, I sort of co-worked with High Cookie on that X58. A um, OC board, and which was, uh, in my opinion, still one of the most iconic uh, uh, motherboards and, and my favorite board. And I'm talking about all boards that I've ever owned, including DFI uh, boards and whatever else. So this this is I uh, really uh, uh, this has a special meaning to me because uh, Gigabyte really decided to take a risk and uh, create a product specific for a very specific very small group of people uh, and 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 it's continued on since but uh, that particular motherboard had a really bad uh, launch uh, it was delayed and that impacted uh, on sales and so subsequently we needed a couple of generations of products to 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 get our head around the products again and I think we're very healthy again we have a super nice x99 SOC champion motherboard, uh, 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 as you can all attest, I'm sure. Z97 boards were fantastic. You know, uh, still, still one of the best memory clockers on the LN2 board and whatnot. So, uh, essentially, we we look at every generation and we look what we've done in the past. We add on interesting things. I my job at Gigabyte, other than you know working in Australia, is to um, uh, to work with communities worldwide. So I gather a lot of knowledge from people. So I feed that back into the the product cycle planning and whatnot. So we, we always try to add some new things, but make sure that we are doing the basics right. And and this is something that in certain series like X79, I think we've probably forgotten and we had to revert back to our old ways. So so I think we're, we're back on track soon. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for uh, summing that up. Uh, as uh, you might have seen on the live chat, I do have actually the, the board that you were talking about, the X58 OC board. And uh, when you were talking about the X79, were you talking about the UD7? That's actually the one that have uh, yeah. not the uh, the official uh, OC name. I mean, I think that's <laughs> <laughs> nice. He's got that one too. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Look, uh, what what we've done with X79 is we uh, uh, we tried to concentrate more on the what happened in X58 and X79. There was a huge transition away from the high-end chipsets to mainstream. So the importance of or, or, or the focus there was mainly for sales to focus on a very niche high-end group of people, uh, workstation market. So. The overclocking wasn't really as big a priority uh, as a, a, a customer for that particular product because we felt that, you know, the the company generally felt that the, you know the Z77 will probably pick up a lot more of the product range, and that's exactly what happened globally. Not just Gigabyte, but all the, all the manufacturers 
uh, the sales of X79 and also the, the, the economic climate at, at that time didn't really allow people to have as big a budget as they used to. So most people kind of saved a little bit of money, went for a cheaper chipset. Uh, yeah, so, so that was not the best extreme overclocking series we've ever done. I, I'll definitely admit that. Well, especially that the X79 was um, launched in the part of the market that was maybe not the, not as best, uh, both economically and financially. But um, like some people were more focusing on the on the mainstream platform, as you as you, as you were saying, the the price yeah. point and, and all that. That was more a general issue about the platform uh, rather yes. than uh, just products you to in my in my opinion uh, at least. Uh, you, you did talk about like the, the time to make this and so on, but uh, the, the SOC ports have a lot of features and we're going to go a bit deeper into it uh, along the show. Um, how do you work on these features and how does the research and development uh, decide on which features make it to the final product? Uh, that, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, from my perspective, I, I have to stress that I'm on the marketing side, on the technical marketing side uh, on HQ and we uh, we don't like on my side I gather information for for future generations so when I when we for example I interact with you guys I interact with um, other clockers around the world uh, uh, we basically I, I put all those things in a list so next time we say hey we've got to you know plan for a new product line uh, I basically just send out um, uh, a list of things that we we should do that are must feature and then I send out a list of things that we, we maybe should look at investigate testing and whatever. So, and then there's a lot of meetings in the R&D side and the marketing in the buyers team, sales side to, to, you know, to get the right mix of products, price, spec, and the lot. Well, uh, that's, a, that's quite a complicated uh, process for that. Uh, how long does it take to make it like this kind of board from start to, uh, start to end? Uh, the, look, there are, it really depends on, on which part of the planning you stop at. So m maybe it's a six to twelve year, a six to twelve month. <laughs> Years, damn it! Are you designing something for Windows three point one? <laughs> yeah, six to twelve month process. Yeah. So so, but but uh, actual testing and uh, finalizing specs. So starting with the very early boards, it's probably a six month uh, process. Uh, we get very early board, they're super basic, uh, we start to test a lot of di different things. So we do all sorts of testing. We, we will, for example, cherry pick different factories that provide PCB for us. And we'll, we'll check which PCB uh, works best, which overclocks the best, what we like about it. And then we'll decide which factory we actually want uh, us to, we want to produce our PCBs at for that particular generation. So sometimes the uh, PC, a lot of the times we'll meet the high end, you'll see PCBs uh, from Taiwanese factories, but sometimes we have factories in China which actually produce a better product for us. So we pick that particular factory. So it actually it depends a lot on what we're happy with way before the final product release. And then we have several revisions. Uh, and also when we, we talk about overclocking series in particular, uh, we generally don't release our absolute craziest board right away at the start because we always uh, there's uh, there's a lot more uh, uh, testing involved, particularly when it comes to um, retail CPUs. Uh, retail CPUs can sometimes uh, 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 respond differently to 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 uh, engineering samples as far as IMCs work, as far as voltages work. So we we have to make sure that we have a mature enough that we don't skip anything when we release the final product that we want everyone to be happy with, to use, to overclock with. That does pose a problem for us because, you know, people pick up, you know, people buy other products in the meantime, but but we, we just want to be happy with the final output. So that's why we, sometimes we don't rush certain series of products. Well, uh, the, what we are looking is the, the overclocking side. So for us, it's no matter if it's uh, right out of the, on the market at day one, as long as it's uh, finished and polished. Um, you were talking about the, the features and uh, the time it takes and, and what you do test. On X99, there was some discussion about the special uh, sockets where you put the CPU yeah. that was uh, specially designed and having some extra stuff on it that some people had, some other people didn't have. Um, the Z97 gigabyte, uh, Z97 board from Gigabyte, you had a special limited edition with a special design um, yes. th that was supposed to increase the memory overclocking and so on. Yep. Um, 
<laughs> how does this research uh, help the Z170X SOC force? And do we have any of these kind of features on the on the new board? Uh, that's a good question. We uh, X99. We had a board about a month before uh, uh, NDA lift. We had uh, uh, the special sockets, and we were testing. But at that time, we didn't really. Uh, there, there, there was some differences, but it was it was still required some PCB redesign and things. And it wasn't really, uh, you know, a hundred percent. So we waited a little bit to release it properly. We have tested it on Z170. We have actually in our in our labs. We have um, special sockets, uh, but we didn't really see any benefit at all in Z170. So, so it's actually we're just using a standard socket uh, for this particular series. Well, thank you for for the details. Um, there's a lot of guys following us right now on Twitch. Uh, thank you to uh, Tommy297, Butter Sugar Crafters, Twisted Gambit, Gather, and Danny Boy 363 Thank you guys for following that. If you have any questions, go on the live chat and ask our guest Dino from uh, Gigabyte in Australia. Um, well, thank you for uh, for giving all this information. Actually, I do actually like to to know how it is made behind the scene. Um, you you did talk when you present the the board by itself and so on. Um, what would be for you, in your opinion, the most important improvements about the Z one seventy X SOC four? So the latest one that you 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 guys released. Uh, there's probably a few things that I like about the new board. So. One is the, the metal shielding that we've got on our PCI Express slots. They are very sturdy. Actually, we, we do a lot of shows around the country. I was just finished PAX um, recently, and I ship those systems now with graphics cards installed, and they are uh, extremely sturdy. In the past, I've had graphics cards rip out a uh, PCI Express slot completely sometimes because of rigidity. But same thing when you're overclocking, when you're running, say, four-way with pots installed. It's important that they are that, that you do have a good uh, physical connections because they do flex when you're installing uh, uh, graphics cards, when you're installing pots or whatever. Uh, I guess the other thing that that's uh, for me, in my opinion, that's quite interesting is the the OC buttons now have a hardware controller. So so we also have this software uh, on our on the Apple uh, iStore or Android store. You can you can download. Uh, uh, I don't know if you can see my. Oh, my the camera is not my camera is not running live, but uh, you can download Gigabyte um, hardware uh, OC software. You can uh, overclock on the fly, uh, on the fly via phone. There is a USB connected to the back with certain motherboards, in, including this particular one. Uh, and so ha having a hardware controller on the motherboard for this uh, it means that it doesn't affect the C uh, CPU clock cycles. So that uh, when you are changing settings uh, on the fly, it doesn't affect the, the frames, for example. And probably the last thing, in my opinion, uh, and I, I use these sort of products myself. Like you can see, I'll show you, I'll change the camera view a little. Uh, that's my office PC, by the way. <laughs> cool one. Holy shit. I love it. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> At least awesome. it doesn't take the dust on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, that's Problem a good point. <laughs> So basically, I, I, there's a, a triple M.2 uh, 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 connector on the Z170 series, and you can run RAID. Uh, there are a lot of PCI Express slots compared to previous gen. So chipset now outputs, I think, 26 PCI Express slots, the CPU 16, which are also doubled by the PLX controller that we have on our motherboard. So, so ha having the ability to write, run RAID now uh, with M.2 uh, devices, and also those will work with U.2 devices. So, if we have adapters uh, for high-end boards, uh, which so you can run a, a NVMe drive or, or three drives and run them in RAID and stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just insanely like good performance and whatnot. So that that's very cool. I, I like that sort of technology that we're getting, and I'm glad that we. You know, I, I was a bit concerned when we were delaying our products because of the Alpine Ridge controller uh, launch. Uh, uh, but I wanted to make sure that we have native solutions for that sort of stuff. So, so, so we, we, you know, in, internally, I was, I was happy that we are providing a proper product so that we don't have to have a revision in a couple of months. So, uh, and um, most of the Gigabytes competitors will probably have to provide a revision soon to, to support native um, Gen 3 based USB 3.1 and Thunderbolt and whatnot. So.
Well, you did talk about the the, um, the, the extra PCI Express line. So that board supports four-way SLI and four-way uh, Crossfire, right? Yeah. And, and you had to do that, uh, adding an extra chip to the board to make it supported, right? Uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, yes and no. Like we, we, we could have probably done without it. I think I'll, ha I'll have to double check on that. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, NVIDIA does want us to run the PCI Express or four-way SLI from one source. So we normally take the output <coughs> for PCI Express slots from the CPU side. So we generally use a, a, a four Z series boards. We generally use a PLX chip to double the bandwidth. So we, we double the 16 to kind of 32 bandwidth. Uh, and so when you're running a four-way SLI, you're running 8888 eight, eight, eight per slot. With Crossfire, we actually run 16888. Eight, eight. So we can utilize some lanes from the chipset itself. And the chipset has, I think, 26 uh, PCI Express lanes as well. So there's quite a lot of lanes on tap and there are a lot of features, a lot of connectivity with this chipset. So it, it is, there, there is a lot more feature rich than before. Well, uh, thanks for the details. Let's go back to the uh, overclocking features that uh, you had. We actually have to, uh, go, to go a little bit quicker because we want to uh, spend some time with Roman and his oh. new stuff. Uh, <coughs> the, um, the OC touch area, you did speak about that in the presentation, but can we uh, can you present that a little bit more in details? Uh, what are the features available and what they are used for? Uh, well, uh, the, the, the OC touch features haven't changed much. So you have it on the camera there now. So essentially, you can change different um, um, ratios and speeds. Uh, one that well, things that stand out for me is OC ignition. That's the one with the little power. Uh, that's the second connector from the left. So basically, uh, Roman will be familiar with this. When you're modding a graphics card, you can basically give power to the motherboard and the graphics card without turning it on. And you can check whether all the voltages are correct before you fire up the card, and and that way you can check whether something is you know, shorting or whatnot. So it's very cool. The same as overclocking uh, or water cooling. You can basically run uh, uh, pumps and fans and stuff before you fire up the system. So that's quite an interesting one. Other than that, we have some some uh, uh, features that will uh, basically allow you to automatically overclock your system as well. Just for people, it's a bit noob friendly. There are troubleshooting buttons there that will allow you to reset CMOS uh, to have a memory, safe memory settings, all that sort of stuff. So. It is fairly standard affair. Uh, we, we, we haven't really gone too much to change it because it, it works. And so basically that's where it's left at. Yeah. There's a, a few more features in the, in the bottom back of the, uh, of the board, um, like the, the, the special USB and so on. Um, just yeah. quickly present what that's, that's supposed to be. Yeah, so I, I already mentioned it. So you, <clears throat> basically you can download an app, connect, it, connect the, your smartphone, uh, via the USB port and uh, you can overclock on the fly with the phone. That's, that is uh, uh, controlled by a hardware controller so it doesn't affect the CPU cycles. Uh, we, will, we are still working to optimize the software or the apps. Uh, so this is something that we probably require a little bit of feedback and that, that's going to evolve a little more than what it, it's quite basic now, let's put it that way. Well, uh, thank you. And there's some other features that uh, we won't discuss too much. That was the Turbo B clock. That was uh, that is something you can use to uh, change the the, the 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 base clock and so on and the different uh, things. But we won't go too much in details for that. I want to know more about the background story about this. Um, basically, Z170 was a completely new platform. As you say, the the OC board was not the first one to be released on the market. Uh, but what was for for what you know, because you're not directly in R&D, but marketing, um, what was the biggest challenge on this board with this new platform? Well, that's Shark. Uh, he, he's been biting into that line, I'm telling you. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, you mentioned Turbo B Clock. Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a feature that we have. Um, it just, it's basically just there to provide flexibility rather than increase performance. I think some media that contacted me about it were didn't really understand the point of Turbo B clock and essentially it's just to give you flexibility of memory frequency overclocking and whatnot but if you want performance you increase your CPU frequency or your memory frequency and and Turbo B clock is is will make no difference 
you can overclock it to 500 megahertz, it's not going to make any difference if the CP frequency is identical. So just, just to make sure that that's sort of clear. Um, uh, but one touch overclocking, or using the app, that sort of stuff is very, quite useful and that will increase your CPU memory frequency. So the, the one, uh, I will just go back to the one touch overclocking. Uh, if you're joining us on Twitch right now, we are the OC show. This is the episode 22 of the season two. And we're talking about uh, all the latest hardware that uh, like is released or we have Dino here uh, talking about one of the uh, main board from Gigabyte. And the one uh, one button OC, OC touch, I, I can't remember how you, you, you call it internally. One, but One touch OC, yeah. Yeah, and, and that button, you just push it and it overclock your system and you gain more uh, FPS for free, yeah! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, just a preset. So it, it basically, <clears throat> for the absolute noob or some guy that really doesn't want to mess around and do anything with it, uh, you can just press the button, you, you're done. You don't have to worry about touching software, BIOS, entering, whatever. You just do that one button and you're done. And we actually, we even did that with X58, AOC, you don't have to pull the, the motherboard out, we, uh, but it had a bu four gig button. So we, we did a lot of testing to make sure that that works and we still, it still wasn't really 100%. Those CPUs were stupidly uh, hot. So it was still a little bit of a problem sometimes, but it was pretty effective. You know, you just click one button, four gigahertz overclock, it was pretty effective. So. <laughs> well, before the last two questions I have for you, I would like to thanks uh, Destronov, Martian5, Wood65, and Scuzz Radio for the follow on uh, on Twitch. Thank you guys uh, very much. If you like this show and you haven't subscribed yet, you can just click follow uh, below the player. Um, we talk about all the hardware parts. Let's talk about the, the BIOS quickly. Um, how do you decide which features you, you get into the board or not? Well, uh, generally that's handled by the R&D. So we, <clears throat> we tend to, like, when I say we, I mean, me, High Cookies, Sophos, uh, there's a few guys that are actual overclockers that work for Gigabyte for, for some of your viewers that don't know, right? Uh, and we do a lot of overclocking ourselves and we also feedback from community. Uh, and then we let these guys know and say, hey, this is what we think you need. But then, uh, you know, sales team has some feedback, uh, you know, the uh, engineering side has feedback. So everyone's got different sort of feedback that they want to put in. So we have to be, you know, we have to be, uh, basically there's a lot of meetings that go on and, and, and they sort of decide what, what, what features they need and, and want and stuff. But it, BIOS is such an ongoing thing, right? It's never perfect. There's always one You thing. always get updates and, and, and yeah. we see it from the new, especially for the new architecture, um, yeah. The first two or three weeks, uh, you always have like a lot of BIOS update because sure. there's more and more people testing. It's actually getting much better than the year before where you had to wait two or three months before mm -hmm. having a proper BIOS. Uh, nowadays, the, the BIOS is, uh, is quite consistent, it's quite uh, mature, actually quite far. Yeah, yeah quite mature. Uh, launch, look, the platform is very similar. So the BIOS is going to be you know, very mature at launch already. Um, last question for you, Dino, tonight. Um, yeah. The previous chipset, you had the Z90, Z90X SoC Force LN2 with a special design. Uh, are you planning to do that on the, that was supposed to, over, to, to uh, overclock higher memory frequencies? Uh, are you planning to do the same for Z170 and DDR4? Uh, yes. Hell yeah! <laughs> really? Because he also has that one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because I also have this one. I don't. Know if we've already it. we've already had it for a month, actually, but we haven't we haven't we're going to release it soon. Yeah. Okay, cool. so th was that announced before? Or you're just the first to say it here. This is an exclusive for you guys. Hell yeah! <laughs> so this is the exclusive news, guys. There will be a Z170X SoC Force LN2 uh, that you can overclock for DDR4. Uh, that, actually, is that going to be the name? Uh, yeah, the name will just have the LN2 uh, name, but look, it might change, but from right now, yes, but I don't know, it might, it, it might change, I'm not sure, but uh, anyway, we have an event, that I'm going to, uh, some of the Team AU guys are getting together soon, very soon, uh, um, High Cookie and Sophos, we're going to get together in Australia and uh, have a little bit of a play with this new board, so we'll be showing it off very soon, we're going to have a live stream about it, so make sure you keep an eye out on Gigabyte social media, so we will uh, promote it a little. Also, we have a, a live stream with you guys, OC TV, on 23rd and 24th of this month, right. I think, uh, and uh, about uh, 
uh, you know, overclocking and new platform and stuff. So that's something else to keep an eye out on, on uh, social media and, and put it in your calendar, I guess. So. Well, uh, thank you for, for the news. I'm actually uh, quite um, quite impressed and uh, and glad to see that you're going to make a LN2 version uh, of this board. Uh, that, that was actually fun to have uh, to have this. For people that doesn't know what the SOC Force LN2 was, that was a special motherboard where you don't have the... Um, uh, I'm gonna say that you don't have the the, the special holes in the PCB to to fix the cooling, and uh, what the guys at Gigabyte did is they put the the RAM slot much closer to the C, to the CPU circuit, and that was actually um, helping in uh, memory overclocking so far. Um, thank you, Dino, for all the questions. Uh, Neo, quickly, did you test one of the OC uh, board from Gigabyte in the past, and what did you think about it? Well, but uh, this one I haven't had too much time with. Um, been actually working on the G1 gaming, which is very similar in many ways. Well, thank you, Neo. Um, <laughs> we, we had a few questions on the live chat, and thank you, Massman, for answering most of the questions from the guy there. So if you're uh, on Twitch, you can go on the live chat and ask us the question for the next, actually, 15, uh, 20 minutes uh, of this show. Thank you, Dino, for, for the detail. Let's move to our last big topic for tonight. Uh, it's about deleting the CPUs and a new business model that goes with it. So with the launch of uh, Skylake, the latest Intel CPUs, uh, we heard more and more about the term delete. We're going to explain what this is about. And uh, that's the action about removing the top protection and so on. Um, and we hear a lot about, oh, you have to remove this to gain, to have like a... A, um, a good overclocking or you need to remove that to increase your uh, your frequency and so on we're gonna be talking about that piece uh, in this show and we have Roman uh, Derber from Germany and as well as Neo to tell us more about what's going on uh, first of all Neo um, what is the purpose of the IHS what is this part and why do we call it the lead basically oh okay um, the purpose of the IHS is to help cool the CPU core so Obviously, you don't mount uh, your cooler directly on the CPU core, right? Uh, you'll crush it, and amongst other reasons. Um, or at least we used to do that actually back AMD days with the Aslon XPs. You could actually you used to mount the CPU, the CPU cooler directly on the core with some sponges around, but you don't do that any anymore. And I think the IHS is actually there for just dissipating heat in a more effective way than just having a cooler directly on the die because the die is much much smaller now and probably more brittle uh, don't quote me on that though <laughs> uh, but the more important thing is that uh, you are going to need the IHS but there's a thermal interface material between the IHS and the CPU core right and de-litting is essentially uh, removing the IHS and swapping uh, out the thermal interface material for something better okay so so to sum it up for people that have uh, that didn't knew what happened before so you have the CPU you have the core of the CPU on top of it and you have the IHS on top of it to protect it and dissipate um, e even more we have this IHS for years on the CPU nowadays um, uh, as you can see on the screen uh, that's yeah. uh, the uh, the top part so that's and a broken one <laughs> <laughs> Actually, so you can see <laughs> some pieces. The, the, the main purpose was to protect the, the CPU core, uh, like the, the thing you can see on the, uh, in the middle of the green, um, the, the green package. So that's actually the internal of the CPU. It's never as big as the AHS. It's always much smaller, um, but that's uh, intended to protect and uh, dissipate more of that. Uh, Roman, can you explain more what is the issue with the AHS on the latest Skylake from Intel? Actually, well, for normal users, there is not really an issue, I have to say. I mean, if you test a normal Skylake CPU, um, I'm pretty impressed by the CPU itself. Like the random CPU would do 4.5, 4.6 easily uh, without issues. So for the normal user, it's not really a problem. But for extreme overclockers, yeah, it's kind of a problem because you, uh, you have to swap the thermal paste to get the proper performance. Um, Without swapping the TIM, it could be that you lose like three or four hundred megahertz on LN2. So yeah, you definitely have to swap the the thermal paste between the die and the IHS. So, 
so so if I if I could you write um, the AHS and the the thermal interface in between is not an issue for the regular Joe for the regular people but once you want to go in uh, extreme overclocking or go a bit deeper in your systems, this is actually uh, becoming an issue. Uh, but the, the CPU we're talking about are the K series and the X series, no, actually the, the K series, uh, that's high-end CPUs. So how come the thermal interface could influence, uh, influence that um, for, for us as the kind of like the target for these kind of CPUs? Yeah, actually, let me get a little bit deeper into this. People kind of think that Intel is uh, playing cheap on those chips, um, that they are just trying to save some money with a cheap thermal paste. But that's technically not really correct because there is an there is an issue with soldering IHS onto the die because you know there's uh, usually you use indium between IHS and die. But you cannot just stack indium on top of the die and solder it. It doesn't work like that. You need a lot of additional steps, like you need gold plating on top of the IHS for better wetting of the indium. Then you need gold plating on top of the die. Then you need another layer of uh, titanium and another layer of vanadium on top of the of the die because of uh, as a diffusion barrier. So the indium atoms cannot diffuse into the CPU. So it's technically not really easy to, to solder the CPU in the first place. And then there's another issue. Depending on the size of the die, um, there is some thermal tension inside the, the material itself, inside the indium. So depending on the amount of thermal cycles you perform on the CPU, uh, you will have cracking inside the thermal interface material, the solder, pre, the solder preform. So uh, let's say you have 200 uh, thermal cycles going from zero to 100 degrees. Uh, you're gonna have like a around 50% chance that the solder preform is cracking, uh, which will eventually kill your CPU. That's actually the technical reason why Skylake CPUs are not soldered. It's not that Intel wants to save some money on those chips. For the end user, it makes more sense to have a normal thermal paste in between there because it's safer in the end and you will have, uh, the, the CPU will have a longer lifespan. But that's uh, mainly caused by the size of the die. So that's also the reason why the X99 chips uh, are soldered because the chip is much bigger than uh, compared to Skylake. So it's not really a problem uh, with the thermal cycling. So, so uh, to, to sum that up, there is two ways to have the lead on the CPU. One is the thermal interface, the, the one we have in Skylake and so on, and the other one is soldering. Uh, and as you, as you explained on the X99 chip. Um, let's, let's switch to like deleting that. So deleting is removing the part of on top and putting it back uh, in some way. Um, how can this impact the casual overclocking or on air or water cooling? Well, if you swap the, the paste, especially for air coolers, uh, air users is kind of cool because you can swap to liquid metal, which is performing similar to soldering. Um, so if you swap the TIM, you can gain like 10 to 20 degrees uh, lower temperature on load. So yeah, you can just simply overclock higher. Okay, so b basically, if you do this, you will have a higher overclock pretty much. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Well, uh, we're gonna go a bit deeper into that after uh, I have some uh, more questions. Um, we talk about the impact in hair and water cooling. How is the impact in extreme overclocking? So we talk about that we will be doing that as extreme overclockers, but what would be the, the main impact for us? Hello? Yeah, we hear you. Sorry, I think, we hear you. I think oh. there was a cut. I didn't get the question. Can you? Okay, maybe, maybe Neo, you can reply. It's fine. <laughs> um, look, it's it's actually a, a cost thing. Outside of the technical part of it, it's a cost thing. For extreme overtrackers, a lot of them are, have sponsorships. Have, you have a lot of money, so you can buy CPUs and delay it and so forth. But for guys who are just starting out overclocking, it's very difficult because if your entry point is needing to deal with a CPU and you do it wrong, that's $300 plus lost, right? So that's basically what complicates this whole thing. Um, with Romans 2, it actually 
removes that risk entirely. Right? So that's something that is new, but in my case, I would say I wish I had three CPUs earlier because they all died right? <laughs> in an attempt to deal it. And if you're one of those people who's just going from the novices uh, or to the amateurs and starting your, doing your first pro um, extreme OC, you might want to buy this tool because if you don't, you're guaranteed to at some point to lose this money that you've invested in your CPU. Right? So, so that's pretty so let's much. Get back into the, yeah. Let's get back into the way of why this could be an issue. Um, uh, can you explain how to delete first, uh, Neo, once again? Uh, how do you explain th that to the, the process of deleting without the tool from uh, Roman? Uh, the deleting essentially inv involves inserting um, a sharp metal object, in this case it would be a razor, in between the PCB of the CPU and the IHS, right? So you'd have to get that in whichever way. Some people used to use all four corners, others used to slide it. It doesn't matter because all those methods at some point led to a dead CPU. So essentially once you pry the IHS off the PCB, you would end up with something like this. But of course, with a working CPU, unlike this one, <laughs> right? That would be the intention there. So it doesn't always happen. If you slip, you can dig into the PCB. I don't know if you can see it on the, on the uh, stream, but there's actually some traces there. So if you cut any of those traces, you might kill an IMC, you might kill a PCI Express, you might kill any one thing or component or connection that you need for a functional CPU. So deleting has those risks. And sometimes even if you don't scratch the PCB, you can actually just nick the core and that's pretty much it for the CPU. Okay, and that's uh, where we're gonna be talking about uh, this new tool from Roman. Yes. Um, basically there's some, um, some company like yours uh, that were working on uh, special tools to ease that process. So can you present the, the device and how it works? Well, I wish I had a tool with me here, but unfortunately, uh, they were all gone on Friday already. The sales guy were quite uh, active, let's say like that. So, so yeah, um, well, the tool was, I don't know. I, I just woke up at 5 a.m. a few months ago and I was like, hey, why, why is there no tool for deleting a CPU? I, I don't <laughs> know why. So I just, I just randomly made one. And I honestly, I, I didn't even think it would have some kind of impact like that. I just made 20, 20 tools first um, because I thought this is going to be just a, a, a small thing for extreme overclockers and nobody will really care. But but then I presented the tool and everybody was like, oh, this is amazing. And I was like, holy shit, <laughs> <laughs> didn't expect that. <laughs> so yeah, um, it, it's, it's really a simple tool. You know, there is also the vice method aside from what you described. So you can actually put the CPU in a small vice and just yeah, tear the, uh, the IHS apart from the from the PCB. But this this worked quite well for, for Haswell, for sure. But then Skylake has such a thin PCB with like 0 0.78 millimeters. So the risk of bending or cracking the PCB is kind of high. So yeah, and um, since I'm working at Case King, I started binning a lot of CPUs and uh, because we sell pre-tested CPUs as well. And then I wanted to to uh, yeah delete one of my best CPUs like one out of 100, and yeah <laughs> I of course I killed this one CPU <laughs> obviously yeah uh, because I cut a little bit too deep and all yeah my PCI Express lanes were gone because I cut a little trace in the PCB. Uh, I wasn't really happy about that, <laughs> so uh, yeah that, that was the part when I decided to eventually make this tool not even just the the CAD. Uh, product I had on my computer already for a few months, so yeah. Well, that's interesting. The, um, so what you're meaning is this way is actually pushing the IHS one way, so it's actually sliding and then popping out. Um, so yeah. that's actually what happened in the, inside the device. Um, what are the risks to use this device compared to the razor blade? Well, actually, there is no risk. That's the key. <laughs> <laughs> well. I mean, there's, there's uh, nothing that can happen because uh, the tool itself has a, a frame inside, so it's keeping the CPU in space from all the from all sides, and then you just push from one direction on, on the IHS until it's gone. So, 
Yeah, not there is actually no risk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how many CVs did you delete with that uh, with that tool so far? Uh, I think I tried around 10 because I wanted to verify if it works on all platforms. So I tried, uh, you know, there are also CPUs with different IHS shapes. So you have uh, Skylake CPUs with a rather sharp edge and then you have one with a, a little bit of uh, a round edge. So I tested two Skylakes, two Hesville, Davis Canyon, uh, Ivy Bridge. The only thing I couldn't test yet was a Broadwell because they simply have no CPU. but uh, so far, it worked very well. I also sent out a sample to a media in Germany, and they also delivered like 10 CPUs on one day, and all <laughs> CPUs worked, so <laughs> yeah, that was kind of cool. Um, so you, you were talking about different kind of CPUs, but the side of the CPUs changed. So do we need different uh, tools for different kind of CPUs, or you can plug all of them in the same tool? Uh, currently, you can use everything up from Ivy Bridge in this tool. I, I figured out that only the, 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 the thickness of the PCB changed during the generations, but not, not anything, everything else kind of stayed the same. So uh, the tool is compatible fully from Ivy Bridge, uh, Hassel, Devils Canyon, uh, Skylake. Well, that, that's, uh, now, now I want one to play with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the device is on sales already, or that will be soon? Uh, it should be uh, online, I think, on Monday or Tuesday for and normal sales. Yeah. Wh what will be the price for it, pretty much? Uh, well, for the moment, it's going to be quite expensive, like 90 euros. But yeah, I'm honestly, I'm trying to make it cheaper. Uh, but for now, I only produce a very small quantity. And yeah, producing in Germany is another thing, you know, it's not really cheap here. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying to lower the price maybe to 80 or 70, but cannot really promise anything for the moment. Okay, so let's uh, stay tuned and see what happens in the next few days. There's actually some people on the live chat that says, awesome tool, I want one from Twisted Gambit. And there's other GP20 boss that says, holy code, that is nifty. So that, that <laughs> there's a lot of people being interested by that tool <laughs> in a way. Um, uh, Neo, as a reviewer, uh, how this would impact you in your reviews? Well, like I said, I wish I had this earlier. Um, because what happens is if you do a review and even if you do LN2 review, which you have to for like the gigabyte motherboard and so forth, if you don't deal it, then all the motherboards become the same. Right? You're all going to hit the same frequency limit. So essentially, it becomes impossible to show the differences between motherboards. So you have to deal it. But if you deal it and get it wrong, like I did, it just keeps costing you money, a lot of money, right? You keep doing <laughs> this, and then eventually, like, I'm not doing this anymore, right? <laughs> so, uh, but this changes everything. Um, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm surprised, because Roman has done this kind of thing before, but I'm again impressed that he managed to do this. And I would hope that vendors start including this in their motherboards and things like that. Uh, especially for the high-end boards, we can pay for it, right? Because it's cheaper than... The tool, even at 100 euros, is not expensive because if you consider, if you buy the CPU and you kill it, that's $300 plus, right? So this, the tool being $100 or 120 isn't really an issue because I guarantee you, if you use the knife method, at some point you will kill the CPU. Right, and, so. and that's the thing. That once you delete the CPU, you cannot RMA it at all. Exactly. So you have to you have to be careful on that. It's kind of like a, a risk taking, and if you can reduce the the risk there, it's, it should be okay. Um, talking about the reviewers and so on, you say that you need to have that to make sure that you can test the motherboard and so on. Um, is this a regular uh, like a general thing for all the reviewers in the media, or just that us as a niche were a bit too picky on uh, on it? Well. Um... I mean, this goes back to another episode that we had earlier. It's near impossible to review the SOC force if you don't do LN2. Because if you don't, then it's the same as the gaming board. It's impossible to review uh, any other vendor's overclocking board if you don't do LN2, right? So given that doing LN2 overclocking is a prerequisite, and you need to deal it to do the LN2 overclocking, those two go hand in hand, and this is you have to buy this, you have to do this. 
right? And this tool has made it so much easier to do those reviews, right? So much easier. But like I said, I wish I had it significantly <laughs> earlier than. Right well, now. you're not the only one because Lukino from Indonesia that is actually qualified for yeah. the IPREX OC Takeover final says that tool is awesome. I wish I had one before I damaged my CPU. So there's a lot of people that actually killed CPUs trying to uh, delete them. So I think, Roman, you should do a, a, a new batch of a few of, uh, of these kind of CPUs. Uh, CPU I actually, actually, I ordered almost 500 on Friday. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. We should we should have some decent quantity soon. Also for uh, the people in the communities out there, because I I read a lot of comments like yeah, this tool is cool, but then if it costs 90 euros, it's gonna be really expensive for one time deleting. But in the end, I think it's it's gonna work. Like one guy is purchasing the tool and still deleting the CPU and sells it for 80 dollars because yeah. it's it's not like you you kind of. You're not destroying the tool, right? The tool is going to mm. stay in the sh same shape. So you can just use it and sell it. And in the end, you maybe spend $10 on, on your CPU. And I think eventually there will be some used tools floating out there for maybe like $40, $50. You can get somewhere, delete your CPU and sell it again. I think that's that's how it how it will be in the end. You'll, you'll have someone Or even to... find someone in your community that uh, will be able to delete the CPU for others. Yeah, <clears> sure. I was going to say you can go to DreamHack or something and uh, offer a CPU deleting service <laughs> <laughs> actually, <laughs> to all the games. <laughs> actually, actually, we're uh, we're planning to do that on from Case King side. Uh, okay. So for for uh, for the moment, we are already offering pre-tested CPUs. Um, so you can you can buy, for example, a 4.8 chip prime stable without without deleting so that's actually already a really really decent chip usually like one out of 40 one out of 50 and uh, in addition we will uh, offer a service to delete those pre-tested cpus so you can for example get liquid metal on the chip if you want to uh, and we sell it with warranty so obviously even if your chip dies you can send it back to me and i will make sure you get a, a similar chip back so um, this will, should be also interesting for the extreme overclocking guys, I think. Uh, I already uh, yeah, got some for, I think, Dusan or uh, some guys from Romania uh, who didn't have uh, a lot of chips in their country, so they couldn't even bin CPUs. So, bin some CPUs for those guys, deleted it with my small tool, uh, shipped it to them. So. Well, that, that's going to be a useful tool for sure. Uh, <laughs> thank, thank you, Roman and Neil, for your, uh, for your information and uh, your thought about this uh, special tool. Uh, that is the end of the show for today. Uh, thank you, uh, you, the guest, for being part of the show. Uh, thank you, Roman, talking about your... Uh, the, the, the official name is the Deli uh, Daily Die Mates. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah you really have to yeah. pick another name. <laughs> die I, I die is it... scary, actually. Why you use die? <laughs> <laughs> hey, mate, you can die. <laughs> <laughs> actually, you know, you know, when I when I released the tool, I didn't even think that it would be a big thing. I man, I I came home um, on Tuesday uh, from work, and then I decided, yeah, let's let's make just a quick video about it. So I I spent like two minutes on my couch and made a quick video, uploaded it to YouTube. Went back to bed, got up in the morning, and it had like 10k views after <laughs> six six hours. And I was like, "What the fuck is going on here?" Like, <laughs> I, I didn't expect it. Maybe I would have spent more time and stuff on it, but I, I seriously underestimated it. <laughs> it's never too late to change. Well, uh, thank you guys for <laughs> thank you guys for being part of the show. Uh, thank you guys, the viewers, for being uh, for being here. Uh, of course, uh, that's you making this show possible. There was a lot of people tonight, a lot of questions on the live chat. Uh, we're going to still be on the live chat for the next few minutes answering the, your last uh, few questions. And we will see you again in two weeks for the last OC show. So we're going to have one episode on YouTube, Timote. Uh, yeah, so like every two weeks, um, we have the recorded episode, which we do here with Peter. So um, in two weeks from now, uh, there will be a new episode and... That would be, well, actually, no, in one week from now, we'll have an episode, and that would be the last recorded episode, I think, or the pre for last episode of the season. So, yeah, it's it's the end of 20, 2015, guys. <laughs> the season two will have then 23 episodes, so uh, 
on the weekend after the, the we, we released the, the the video on YouTube, uh, we're gonna have a live Q and A here on Twitch. So if you want to know what's happening and when we're gonna be going live, you can always uh, follow us on uh, on Twitch right there. Uh, if you're watching this replay on YouTube, well, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You will have the the information about the the, the new video and when we uh, post the replay. And of course, you can always find us on Facebook and Twitter, uh, Facebook Overclocking Dash TV and Twitter at Overclocking. TV in one word. Thank you guys for being there. Thank you so much for all the follow tonight. And we're gonna see you in two weeks from now. And until then, keep pushing. Keep it. pushing it. <laughs>